Welcome to the National Diabetes Prevention Program Understanding the DPRP Evaluation Report webinar, brought to you by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's Diabetes Prevention Recognition Program, or DPRP. Reporting data to the DPRP. All CDC-recognized organizations must make a data submission every six months to maintain recognition. Data submission schedules are set according to the date the organization's application for CDC recognition is approved. Organizations will receive either a progress report or an evaluation report after each data submission. A progress report is generated when there are no participants who have concluded their participation in the Lifestyle Change Program and are eligible for evaluation. If there are participants who have concluded their participation in the program and are eligible for an evaluation, then the organization will receive an evaluation report. Evaluation reports include the results of the evaluation on the completed cohort or cohorts, progress on ongoing participants who began seven to 12 months before the submission, and progress on new participants who began one to six months before submission. All reports evaluate program results under the current DPRP standards. The purpose of this webinar is to walk through the different parts of the report. Report Summary. The first section of every report is the report summary. Here, the organization will see their org code, delivery mode, approval date, effective date, current evaluation sequence number, which is the number associated with the six-month period the organization is submitting data for, the current submission sequence date range, the outcome of the current evaluation, and the recognition expiration date. In this example, we see that this organization is achieving full plus recognition based on their current evaluation Sequence mapping. The sequence section displays information on the three types of participants who are reflected in the report, concluded, ongoing, and new. Concluded participants are those who are now finished with the program. Their cohorts started 12 to 18 months prior to the current data submission, and their data are ready for evaluation. Ongoing participants are those whose cohorts started the program 6 to 12 months prior to the current data submission and whose data will be ready for evaluation in six months at the time of the next data submission. Finally, the new participants are those whose cohorts started the program within six months prior to the current data submission and whose data will be ready for evaluation in 12 months. Summary and Recommendations. The Summary and Recommendations section provides notes specific to the organization's outcomes. These include a declaration of the recognition status that has been achieved, a summary of which requirements were missed in the full evaluation, a list of strategies for meeting the various requirements, and where to submit requests for technical assistance. Evaluation Results, Part 1 of 4. If a full evaluation has been performed, the results are found in the Evaluation Results section. The section starts by defining the term completer and then by indicating who was evaluated according to the date range in which their cohorts began. Requirement 5 states that there must be at least five completers in the evaluation cohort. Completers are defined as eligible participants in the evaluation cohort who attended at least eight sessions during months one through six, and whose time from first session held by the cohort to last session attended was at least nine full months. The evaluation cohort is the collection of cohorts that began within the sequence being evaluated. In this example, there were 35 completers. The green check indicated the organization has met requirement five. Evaluation Results Part 2 of 4. Requirement 6 states 
that the organizations must show that at least 60% of completers in the evaluation cohort achieved one or more of the following outcomes at the end of the program. At least a 5% weight loss, at least a 4% weight loss combined with performing at least 150 minutes per week on average of physical activity, or at least a 0.2% reduction in baseline HbA1c. As before, the green check indicates that at least 60% of the 35 completers met this requirement. In this example, 65% met the requirement. Evaluation results, part three of four. Requirement seven states that a minimum of 35% of all evaluated participants in the evaluation cohort must be eligible for the lifestyle change program based on either a blood test indicating prediabetes or history of gestational diabetes mellitus, GDM. The green check indicates that the organization has met this requirement with 63%. Evaluation results, part four of four. Organizations can earn an additional two years in full recognition when eligible participants in the evaluation cohort have been retained at the following percentages. A minimum of 50% at the beginning of the fourth month since the cohorts held their first session. A minimum of 40% at the beginning of the seventh month since the organizations held their first session. And a minimum of 30% at the beginning of the 10th month since the cohorts held their first session. In this example, the organization met the threshold with 100%, 93%, and 88%, which is denoted by the green check marks. Concluded participant summary. The next section of the report provides a summary of information on concluded participants. The summary starts with the number of cohorts represented in the data. This is provided as information only. CDC does not provide evaluations at the cohort level. The next line of the summary shows the total number of participants whose cohort held its first session during that sequence. The next line displays the number of participants excluded from the evaluation due to not meeting the body mass index, BMI, threshold, or not being eligible based on the outcome of a blood test a score on the prediabetes risk test, or a history of GDM. The last line of the table indicates how many of the concluded participants were deemed eligible for the program. Concluded Participant Attendance Summary. This is a continuation of the process determining which participants will be fully evaluated. At the top, it starts with the total number of eligible concluded participants, 40. The next line shows the total number of participants excluded due to not meeting attendance or time in the program thresholds. In order to be evaluated, eligible participants must have attended at least eight sessions in the first six months and have at least nine full months from the cohort's first session date to the last session attended by the participant. In this example, five participants are excluded, leaving 35 participants. These people are the completers. The five excluded participants are considered non-completers. Profile of non-completers. The purpose of this table is to show in which program month the non-completers attended their last session. In this example, two participants attended their last session in month five of the program one participant attended their last session in month six of the program, and two participants attended their last session in month eight of the program. Concluded participant characteristics, sex, age. The next section of the report looks at characteristics of completers and non-completers. This information can assist organizations in enrolling and retaining participants. With respect to demographics, Participant sex and age are shown here. Rather than showing age as is reported, age entries have been grouped into three categories, 18 through 44, 45 through 64, and 65 plus. 
included participant characteristics, ethnicity, race. Here, participant ethnicity and race are displayed for completers and non-completers. Because participants can identify as multiple races, the percentages do not necessarily add up to 100. Concluded participant characteristics, education, referral. Concluded participant numbers according to their self-reported education and whether they were referred by a healthcare provider are presented here by completer status. Concluded participant characteristics, motivation. Here, the number of concluded participants by completer status are shown according to their reported main motivation for entering the program. Concluded participant characteristics, payer source. The final graph shows the number of concluded participants according to the payer source they reported as paying for their program enrollment. As with the other graphs, these numbers are shown by completer status. Ongoing participant summary. The process and evaluation reports provide summaries for the participants who are not yet concluded. It is separated into two parts, the ongoing participant summary and the new participant summary. Ongoing participants are those whose cohort held its first session six to 12 months before the current data submission. New participants are those whose cohort held its first session within the six months before the current data submission. The summaries in this section provide a high level overview rather than outcomes associated with these participants because it is not yet known who the completers will be. Providing outcomes would be premature. Instead, the summaries indicate how many participants are associated with a cohort that held its first session in that sequence, how many are ineligible based on their baseline BMIs, and what percent of those meeting the BMI threshold are eligible based on the result of a blood test or history of GDM. Ongoing participant characteristics, graphical representations. Graphical representations of ongoing participant characteristics are shown in this section of the report as were displayed for the concluded participants. All graphs are for total participants since completers have not yet been determined. For the purposes of this presentation, we will not show the graph. New Participant Summary. The New Participant Summary is similar in layout and content to the ongoing participant summary. These will only be shown if there are participants whose cohort held their first sessions in these sequences. New participant characteristics, graphical representations. Graphical representations of new participant characteristics are shown in this section of the report as were displayed for the concluded participants. For the purposes of this presentation, we will not show the graph. Report retrieval and review. Once the progress or evaluation report has been compiled and released, the organization will receive an email to let them know that the document is ready for viewing and download. The evaluation and reports module of the DPRP portal houses all reports. Requests for a call to review the report with a technical assistance representative can be made through the National VPP Customer Service Center. This concludes this presentation. Thank you for participating in the National VPP Diabetes Prevention Recognition Program.